Well, happy Wednesday, friends. Thanks for joining me for a few moments on this Good News Wednesday, March 31st. Uh, welcome this morning, and good to see some of you online already up bright and early. I'm not sure how bright you are, but it's bright outside, and it is a great Wednesday. Good morning, Jonathan and Sarah and Gail. Good to see you bright and early this morning, and uh, Heather as well. Um, hope you're feeling good, uh, Heather, today, and things are progressing for you. So uh, God bless you today, and uh, yeah, it's just good to be together. And I got to admit, today I'm fighting technology. Do you ever have one of those days when you're fighting technology, and uh, it just seems we're not getting along this morning? But uh, that's okay. Here I am, and uh, that's good news. And I just want to take a moment, as I have been doing every Wednesday in 2021. I just want to take a moment to share some good news with you today and especially focus on God's Word because it is the last Wednesday in March. Can you believe it? It's the last day in March. It's the last Wednesday in March. And of course, it's Holy Week, uh, the greatest week of the year, really, for those of us who have put our faith and trust in Jesus. And uh, so it's so good to be together today and, and just share some good news. So uh, where I want to start today is this. Have you heard? Have you heard about, did you hear earlier this week about this huge cargo ship that was stuck in, in the Suez Canal? Did you hear about that? Uh, this m massive cargo ship, uh, 400 meters long, and uh, it was stuck in the Suez Canal, which of course is a, a small a narrow waterway uh, between the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea, and a very important trade route, apparently. Apparently, when this massive cargo ship got stuck, uh, it just it will block traffic, so to speak. And the, the cargo ships just began to pile up behind it, so to speak, and were waiting and waiting. And, and I'd heard, I'd read that 450 cargo ships were stuck waiting behind this, uh, this massive cargo ship that had got stuck in the Suez Canal and uh, well it ran aground and and I was thinking about that and we'd been watching that in our family my my kids were interested in it and there was actually a website uh, I think it was like is it still stuck dot com or something and so we're all watching this ship that's going nowhere and it's just stuck in the Suez Canal and I, I was as I was doing some reading about it and researching about it just to to, to learn a little bit more you know, that is a, a very important trade route. And as those ships backed up, uh, billions of dollars worth of cargo is sitting there and not going anywhere because this ship had run aground and was stuck. Now, of course, the good news today is this. The good news is that the ship has, uh, has been floated. <laughs> they got it moving again, and it took 14 tugboats and they had to wait and get a very high tide. And one of my boys was telling me that the, the moon was right too, and a full moon maybe. And, you know, everything worked in their favor, and they were able to get this thing floated again. And with these 14 tugboats, it was able to, to, to drag this thing and, and guide it through the Suez Canal so that the ships can get going again. So I, I guess that I'm sure for somebody today, that is really good news. For probably a lot of people, that's really good news. But it got me thinking. It got me thinking about this. Uh, I can remember, actually, back in the fall, when things were open and we were allowed to, uh, I was in Halifax, and I was in Halifax with my wife, and uh, we were staying near the harbor there in Halifax, and as we were staying there, one morning I looked out and I saw this massive, uh, I think it was smaller than this particular ship, but it was a massive ship, just this massive ship, and uh, and I thought, man, how does that thing even float? There were so many containers on it. And I'm thinking, how does that thing even float? It is so big. And in the Halifax Harbor, there was a couple of tugboats shifting it and moving it oh so slowly and oh so carefully. It took them a couple hours just to bring this thing into the harbor and into port so that they could unload their cargo. And I'm like, I, I can't get my head around even how that thing floats out in the middle of the ocean and doesn't topple over. There's some amazing things that people have done in this world. There's some amazing things that that have been created, uh, ships that float, and I just can't get my mind around it. It's just so amazing. But I see it. I see it, so I know it's true. They're floating. And yet this week, 
you know, we've all been watching, or some of us anyway, have been watching this massive cargo ship that got stuck. And as I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about how just impossible of a task it must have seemed for those that were working to get this, this huge 400 meter long cargo ships uh, released from the bottom and, and that had run aground in the Suez Canal, I was thinking, man, that would have been a daunting task. And um, it would have been so, so difficult. Yet they did it. That's the good news today. Well, that's not really the good news I want to share. As good news as that is to the sailors on board that ship and the people trying to get that Suez Canal open and going again, I'm sure they're feeling great. I saw pictures of the tugs, uh, their horns going, and people on the shore cheering and, and celebrating this thing moving again and, and becoming unstuck. I got thinking about the fact that sometimes I feel stuck. I don't know. Do you ever feel stuck? I have a feeling that we all get to a place sometimes where we feel stuck and um, and we feel like we kind of run aground. And, you know, sometimes we get in that place and we need to be reminded that uh, there are things that God has done that can help us to, well, to get going again and to be freed. And uh, this is this is Holy Week. This is Easter week. And uh, I was reminded as I was watching this massive ship and I saw pictures of it, as I was watching this ship that was stuck, I was reminded that sometimes I get stuck and sometimes I get stuck in my sin. And I bet you you're not any different than I am. Sometimes you get stuck too. And the reality is we, we all get stuck and we all get stuck in our sin at times. And we feel like we can't break free from something, from someone, from, from the, the sin, the Bible says, that entangles us. So there are things in our life sometimes, not good things, not healthy things, bad things that entangle us. And we feel like we get stuck. We get, you might have heard it said, we get in a rut. But here's the thing. God has done something for us so that we don't need to stay in that rut, so that we don't need to stay stuck. We don't have to be stuck in our sin. That's what this week is all about. That's what Easter is all about. Easter is God doing what we couldn't do ourselves. Easter is about God making sure that we didn't have to be stuck in sin any longer. And if you think about it, even, even before Jesus came, before Jesus died, before Jesus' resurrection, uh, the people could know God, but not in the same way, and they were still stuck doing the same things over and over again. You think of the sacrifices. Not sure how much you know about the Bible and, and before Jesus came, but in order for people to have a, a connection with God and a relationship with God and to kind of deal with their sin, they had to offer sacrifices, and they had to do things over and over and over again. Now, there was meaning in those things. And God put them in place for a reason. But at the same time, they were stuck doing the same things over and over and over again. And so, but that's not what God wants for us. He doesn't want us to be stuck. He doesn't want us to be stuck in our sin. He doesn't want us to be stuck in a rut. He doesn't want us to be stuck in guilt, in shame. He wants us to be free. And, and that's what Easter is all about. Not only does he want us to be free, he wants us to be free to live now, and he wants us to be free to live with him later, and uh, he wants to spend eternity with us. And we don't have to be stuck in our sin any longer. And that's good news. And Easter is the best news ever. Easter, this what we celebrate this week as God's people, as Christians, the death and the resurrection of Jesus is the best news ever. I want to share with you just a quick story, just one more quick story out of God's Word. And it comes from Matthew chapter 19. And it is truly good news. It is truly good news. And what we see in Matthew chapter 19, we see somebody come to Jesus. Of course, this is before Jesus uh, died and, and was resurrected. But before, not long before, but before Jesus uh, went to the cross and then was raised from the dead, uh, he had this conversation. This person, a rich young man, comes to him. And this rich young man says this, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? That's his question. He says, what must I do? What must I do to have eternal life? And I don't know about you, but I do a lot of things. I have a feeling a lot of us do a lot of things. We do a lot of things. We, hopefully we do a lot of good things. But none of those good things are the secret to getting us unstuck. None of those good things are going to get us eternal life. None of those good things are going to get us into heaven. 
And, but this rich young man comes to Jesus and he wants to know what he must do to receive eternal life. And so they had this conversation and Jesus talks to him a little bit and he says, well, what do you think? And, and you know, what are the, what's the greatest commandments? And they, they talk back and forth. And then they get to this point in their conversation where Jesus says, he looks at the rich young man and he says, well, you need to sell it all. Can you imagine somebody that has a lot? He, this rich young man that the scriptures tell us, the Bible says he had a lot. Jesus looks at him and says, you need to sell it all. You, you need to be freed from your possessions because you're stuck with your stuff. And some of us get stuck. You know, some of us are stuck because of our sin. Some of us are stuck because of somebody else's sin and things that have been done to us. We're in these ruts. But some of us are so connected to the stuff that we have. Why did that ship get stuck in the Suez Canal? Because it had so much stuff on it. It's filled with containers of stuff. <laughs> like over 18,000 containers of stuff. <laughs> Sometimes we get stuck in these places in life because we're so attached to our stuff. And so Jesus looks at this rich young ruler and he says, he says to this, he says, you gotta sell it all. And the rich young ruler just turned and walked away. This rich young man said, I, I just, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then Jesus and his disciples, his followers that are there with him, they have this conversation. And, and his, his closest friends look at Jesus and say, well, Jesus, I'm paraphrasing here. You can look it up. Matthew chapter 19 in the Bible, God's word. But basically, his friends look at him and say, well, who then? Who then can have eternal life? Who then can enter the kingdom of God? How is it even possible? How can we get unstuck? Because we're attached to. And Jesus looks at them and he says this. For man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. See, it's not possible for us to do it on our own. We try and we try and we try and we do and we do and we do. And yet, we can't do it on our own. And that's what Easter is all about. That's what this week is all about. This week reminds us that we need Jesus. We needed him to die and we needed him to be resurrected. And with God, all things are possible. That's what Easter tells us. Easter is the best news ever because we see someone who was dead come back to life. That's not something I can make happen and that's not something you can make happen. That's something only God can make happen. And so with God, all things are possible. That's the good news that I have for you today. That's the good news of Easter because even Jesus' closest followers I'm going to talk about this a little bit more next week on Good News Wednesday. But even Jesus' closest followers began to doubt after he was put in that tomb. And yet, the resurrection tells us that with God, all things are possible. So friends, I, I pray you have a great Good News Wednesday. I pray that as you celebrate Easter, you will remember the reason for the season, the reason we celebrate. And I pray that if you're stuck today, if you feel like you're in a rut, if there's something hanging over you, holding you down, maybe you're a little bit too attached to the things of this world, your possessions. But if you're stuck today, I would, I would, if you're stuck in a relationship, if you're stuck feeling, uh, uh, struggling in any way, remember these words. Commit these words to memory. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. God bless you today. Have a great Easter.
screen.